Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today I am really excited to bring you a trailer breakdown of the Siege of Shanghai. This is the first multiplayer gameplay we've gotten for Battlefield 4, and there's a lot of interesting goodies in here. Now, the first things we notice when flying in here are large buildings. This is probably one of the largest urban looking maps that I think has been available in any of the Battlefield series before. We've got familiar vehicles, that was the Viper on the way in. Here's some Abrams tanks down below. I believe we're flying in the Super Huey transport helicopter. And check out the environment here. Notice the billboard on the left, it just flashed some animations there. So expect to see some more advanced texturing and cool stuff like animated TVs and stuff in the new urban environments of Shanghai and other Chinese cities. I paused it again here because it says Commander Online and we can see the Commander shown in blue down by the minimap in the left hand corner. Um, you'll notice later that at one point the commander's name turns green and I believe this is because he has this specific squad selected. I'll kind of point this out later in commander mode. It looks like you can select individual squads to give them specific directions at which point I believe the commander's name will turn green in the squad view. You'll notice here that uh, he's getting the usual amount of points for killing guys, except there's also a little bit of a squad order bonus for completing objectives. You'll see B has little green triangles around it. This is familiar with uh, other Battlefield games in the past where the squad leader could actually assign objectives and they would be very apparent as to what you're supposed to do, like attack a flag, defend a flag, that sort of thing. It was very easy to do in game and uh, it looks like you're going to be getting extra points for that. Also suppression, as you'll notice here, the screen blurs and earlier in the firefight you were getting suppression bonus points for kills. So suppression is definitely still going to be in multiplayer. We still don't really know exactly to what extent it'll be in there. I have a feeling they're probably going to turn it down a little bit as it seems like they've turned down the brightness of the sun as well. Now I'm pausing here because I want you to notice that Shinto is about to C4 this tank and he is the recon class designated by the little sniper icon there. So it looks like recon class is going to get C4. Some people have pointed out that early in the video Shinto is the support class and then he just magically changes to the recon class and that perhaps maybe the support class really gets the C4 and there's some sort of glitch here. Uh, no, that's not the case. It's actually the magic of editing. You'll notice when the tank suppresses the soldier earlier in the video, they just do a quick cut and a bunch of people are different classes. And of course, everybody's loving this advanced uh, destructibility here. This is adding a whole new level of destruction to the game, pun intended. Uh, just the ability to blow out one level uh, from under the other, bring a tank come crashing down. It's just gonna add a nice level of strategy and depth to every map, just adding that extra bit of realism. Now, I paused it here real quick just because there was a little bit of debate as to whether or not this was a spot command or it was a single player thing that was directing AI units. This is for sure a spot command. You'll notice after the Jeep gets blown up, you get spot bonus points. And it looks like the spot bonus is worth a little more points this time around, encouraging players to spot more rather than just shoot at the enemies, fighting over who gets the kill or not. Here we see the Cougar Armored Transport Vehicle. Think of it as a Humvee that is larger, heavily armored, uh, and slower moving. I believe it will seat four soldiers and it has a 50 cal machine gun on top. All right, so we're making our way down to the water here and it's gonna become apparent real quick that water combat or naval combat is going to be much more popular in Battlefield 4. So we got this cool little fast travel attack craft here. We got some jet skis in the water. And you'll notice in the bottom right hand corner that we do not have unlimited ammo for vehicles now. This is a bold change and I think the right change for Battlefield 4 is going to basically make vehicle drivers less powerful. They're going to have to time their shots better, make their ammunition count for more. Uh, so it's gonna be generally a less spammy game mode. And how awesome is it that you can bail out of your fast attack craft into jet skis that are basically like escape pods. This is great because now it means that if you have to bail out of a boat in the middle of the water, uh, you're not just gonna be sitting there as a floating target for somebody to pick off. You now actually have a viable escape option. Now I paused it here because we're seeing hit markers with an assault rifle on a helicopter. This means that uh, small arms are now gonna do damage to helicopters. You used to be able to do this in older Battlefield games. 
Uh, for some reason, they took it away in Battlefield 3, and I think it's a great addition. It means that basic infantry units that don't have anti-air weaponry are still going to be able to peck away at helicopter armor, making sure that helicopters can't just dominate a squad of soldiers without any serious repercussions. All right, I've decided to shut up about guns up until now, and what we're looking at right here, the engineer is holding a CZ Scorpion Evo 3A1. This gun is designed by the Czech Republic. It's a submachine gun, fires 9mm rounds, so uh, the best way to describe this is an SMG or PDW from Battlefield 3. It's a cool looking gun. A lot of people probably recognize it from Black Ops 2. No, it's not some futuristic made up gun. It actually does exist. And in fact, speaking of Czech guns, the gun that the player is carrying here on screen, although it looks like a SCAR, is actually what is called a CZ805, and it is a Czech assault rifle. Now the two middle players in the elevator here, one a recon class, one a support class, are using the AK-5 assault rifle. This is sort of a, uh, well it's a Swedish gun and it's designed for more cold climate stuff. You'll notice it has a huge trigger guard and uh, some of the magazines designed specifically for this gun have some pretty big grips on it just for using with larger snow gloves. And what's even more interesting is that we have a recon class and a support class both using the AK-5, which I'm guessing is going to be classified as a carbine in this game. And uh, that's kind of cool. It seems like carbines might sort of fuse over with PDWs and we might just have a general purpose carbine slash PDW weapon class that all classes can use. That seems like it's going to add a lot of variability to different classes and how you want to play them. And then we have the assault class to the left that looks like he's using a SCAR L. It could be a SCAR H, but I believe it is the SCAR L. And again, we're seeing the side flip sight here, which uh, many of the players in the elevator actually have. And this seems like it's going to be a really cool option to add onto your weapons just to give them that zoom up option if you need to hit a player that's really long range and the red dot just isn't cutting it. And oh yeah, we're in an elevator right now that actually works in a multiplayer game. Elevators are freaking awesome and I can't wait to see what kind of crazy play styles uh, evolve around elevator combat. It's going to be pretty funny. I'm sure stuff's going to get crazy with the C4. Alright, so this helicopter fight here is just awesome and I cannot wait to be a chopper pilot and start wrecking people on the top floors of skyscrapers. I'm probably not going to be sitting still like that guy is right there, but it does look pretty darn cool. Now, once again, if you'll turn your attention to the lower left-hand corner, we'll see that there's four tiers of squad perks. Now, this squad here is on the first tier of squad perks, but you'll notice later in the video, the second tier lights up, which looks like it's extra ammo. So currently, we have the sprint squad perk, I'm guessing makes everybody run faster. Then we get the next one, which is extra ammo. You can carry more ammo. And it seems like this ranks up based on the objectives that your squad completes possibly the amount of kills that your squad gets. So not only does this seem to eliminate the concept of perk stacking, but it also means that if you're in a smaller squad, perhaps a squad of four or a squad of three, you could still in theory get all the perks uh, and not need a full squad to get all the benefits. And on top of all this stuff, it seems to encourage objective-based gameplay. It's also possible that the squad commander might have control over what kind of perks he wants to use in his specific squad. So rather than having four players trying to coordinate together on what perks they're going to use, it's just all up to the squad commander. Of course, that's just purely speculation on my part. All right, here it is, Commander Mode, that thing that we know has been coming for a while because DICE has pretty much leaked it to all the right sources and tried to generate hype about this. Personally, I never got on the hype train just because I remember Commander Mode from Battlefield 2, and I was never a big fan of it. But uh, let's talk about what we actually see here on the screen and uh, how it's changed since Battlefield 2 and what kind of cool things it might bring to the table. First and foremost, we're seeing Commander Mode on a tablet, a iPad, I believe, so we have touchscreen controls. I believe you're also going to be able to control Commander Mode from a PC. Um, it might actually offer some benefits for touchscreen controls, say, if you're playing on the console. You might not want to try and pinpoint targets using your joysticks. It might be quicker to use touchscreen controls of a tablet, so you might see some benefits there. Personally, I think the whole tablet touchscreen Interface is kind of gimmicky for Battlefield. I mean, Battlefield is hardcore console, hardcore PC. 
I can't imagine too many people wanting to sit back on their tablet and call in artillery strikes and that sort of thing. I don't really see how much joy you're going to get out of it, because honestly, look at this screen. It's little blinking dots. If you want this kind of gameplay, go play in RTS. I don't see why you would want to just exclusively do commander mode on a tablet. But let's check out the tools that you have available to you. You can see that the user has selected those tanks on the sort of right side of the screen there, and he's got some different options available. He's got an infantry scan, he's got deploy gunship, he's got tomahawk cruise missile, um, and you've also got an EMP UAV and a scan UAV. So you've got different reconnaissance tools, you've got different attack tools. It's kind of neat to see the AC-130 linked to commander mode. This seems like a more intelligent way to deploy an AC-130. If you can keep it out of the hands of players and sort of have more generalized artillery support from it, I think that'll make it a less overpowered tool. Um, and just something that people are going to be raging about a little bit less. You'll also notice that depending on what points you control on the map determines what points the commander gets to use for assets. Example, C controls deploy gunship, E controls infantry scan, B controls tomahawk missile. Now imagine if one team gets a lot of points, like four out of the five points. Your commander is going to have a lot of artillery strike options available to them. You also notice some blinking lines here on the screen. The commander has squad B selected and it seems like he's telling squad B to attack B objective here. So once the commander tells a specific squad to do something, uh, then I believe if they accomplish that task, like here it would be defend uh, point B, then they'll get some extra points for that. It's a neat way of sort of telling people what to do, but not forcing them what to do. So you're not really ruining anybody's experience in terms of like forcing them to do an objective that they don't want to, uh, but it will give them incentive to do some of the commander issued objectives. Now here's my problem with commander mode and why I think it's ultimately going to be a bad thing for Battlefield, is that you're putting a lot of power in one player's hands. You'll notice in Battlefield 3, if an awesome player gets in a jet in a round, all of a sudden that one player has a huge amount of power over your team and what the outcome of a match can be. Uh, same thing with Commander, except now Commander seems like they're going to exist in every single map. So if you've got a bad Commander versus a really good Commander, that could make a huge difference. And I just don't like it when you put that much power in one player's hands in a sort of public multiplayer game. I really hope that DICE has had the foresight to think about these sort of things, and hopefully it won't be the Achilles heel for Battlefield 4. I hope I'm just being a pessimist and that it's really going to be an awesome aspect of Battlefield. All right, so the commander launches the missile. You'll even notice that he got 50 points for launching that missile there. So the commander can get points, and I assume that they're going to be on the scoreboard as well, although it seems like it's going to be very hard to balance the commander's points versus other players' points. Um, and during this part of the trailer here, you hear that the tanks are doing some serious damage to the support structure of the skyscraper. So obviously the uh, destruction is taking it to a whole new level. We're getting some suppression assists here. And there is a flag up on top of this building. Now you guys have all seen this trailer, so you know what's going on. The building's careening to one side, uh, the whole map. Uh, it seems to be sliding off to one side, so they're jumping off, but what actually happens to the capture point once this skyscraper goes down? And look at that, the mini-map, lower left-hand corner, C no longer exists, it's A, B, D, E. But wait for it, the player's gonna land here, look back up at the skyscraper, and uh, in the actual live stream here, you'll notice that there's a big TV screen on the side of the skyscraper that turned off as it's falling. So the skyscraper comes down, but wait, C is back, and now it's in the ruins of the map. And that's what they're talking about with Levolution there. Dynamic maps that you can literally change the layout of through destruction in Battlefield 4 by taking down skyscrapers, bridges, whatever they are in the specific maps, and it's going to change the flow of battle. So maybe one team has got awesome air cover so you can never get up to the skyscraper and uh, take over the flag so bring the skyscraper down and now your ground support have an easier time of trying to defend the sea flag. Now as if that weren't enough, DICE saves us a nice little tidbit for the very end of the game here showing us a counter knife. Now let's watch that again in slow-mo and analyze what's going on here. 
It appears to be a frontal knife animation, which could sort of happen in Battlefield 3, but I think it was sort of a lag-related glitch. I think you could only really knife people from sort of the side or rear. And once again, if you look at the center of the screen, it says F counter attack. So once the player enters their attack animation, it seems like all you gotta do is hit F to hit that counter attack. This could be awesome for countering those punks who like to run around and just hit the knife button all day because let's be honest in Battlefield 3 it is pretty easy to melee kill somebody just because of the easy auto knife animation. Alright let's come back to this image here because we can learn a few more things from it. If you look at the bottom center of the screen you'll notice that by hitting the 4 button you can deploy what looks like a med pack. So it seems like med packs are coming back in the game. You also notice that sort of in the haze here we see a transport helicopter. This is a Chinese Z9 helicopter or at least a variant of the Z9. It could be the H425. There's a few different combat variants of this one. Um, I imagine it's going to be used as a transport helicopter since we already know uh, which attack helicopter the Chinese are going to get. Anyway, that seems to be all the information I have the energy to squeeze out of this trailer for now. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot more information coming out of E3, so stay tuned for all the E3 news that's coming about, all the live streams, all that exciting stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.